Hiya, I'm Jasper, and welcome to your video review for Resident Evil 2, aka Resident Evil Apocalypse. So, as always, I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the furry. To start off the furry, uh, all of the furry-esque zombie creatures that you remember from the first one, well, they're in this one! Ah, I know, you might be talking about that. Okay, so, moving on to the good and the bad. This movie stars, once again, the always awesome, always badass Mila Yavovich, and... Oded Fair, I'm probably mispronouncing that, but this guy is always a badass. He is so badass. I, ah, oh, I loved him in the Mummy movies. He was just fantastic. He was the guy with the tattoos on his face that was like the protector tribe, like that guy. That guy is in this, and he plays a badass motherfucker in this one too. And he does such a good job of it. He's also more recently in Star Trek Discovery's later seasons, and yeah, I super love him in this and in action movies and the funny thing is that he apparently doesn't really like being an action hero he's not like big into action movie guns martial arts blah 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 blah, blah. which is just such a shame because he's so good at it he is so good so good um uh, anywho moving on from there uh the setup from the second one they roll right into that essentially it's been a little while and the timeline between the end of the first one and the beginning of the second one they kind of stretch it out. Like, it makes it seem like it's, you know, five minutes, whatever, but it's actually been a few months, I think. Uh, so that timing is a little funky, in my opinion, but that's fine. If you just kind of go with that, it works. There are some things that I did not like. I think that they were trying to incorporate some of the game stuff or some of the green game characters. Like, there's a Jill Valentine and some other dude. Like, I think they're from the games. I've never played the games, never going to, don't care, not my thing. Uh... I've just seen these movies, that's it. I've seen, I think, one of the animated movies too, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> Point is, I feel like they were, they might have gotten hassled for having uh, original characters in a Resident Evil world or calling it Resident Evil. You know, like how Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within, people are like, why are you calling Final Fantasy? And I'm, I'm one of those people that's like, if you just called it The Spirits Within instead of Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within, the movie would have been far more successful, in my opinion. But, with this one, I was fine with the Resident Evil moniker, and I am still fine with it throughout all these movies. I think it works. Because the Umbrella Corporation, all that jazz. There's a reason. Anywho. Moving on, this one, some of the things that they did that I did not like, that they did not explain, I don't know if it's because it was in the game or whatever, but a movie needs to stand on its own. And in this one, some of the zombies, for no discernible reason, come out of the ground from a graveyard. That is not how the T-virus is shown to be spread in the first one. It's not how it's shown to be spread in this one. There is no reason to that I can see for, it to, for dead people to come out of the ground. And also... I don't want to call it spoilers, but, like, that also, dis like, it does not match with the, like, how zombies operate in future Resident Evil movies. So it's like they were like, hey, this is a really cool sequence, let's film this sequence, but it doesn't work with the rest of the universe. So just take out the graveyard sequence, and things work better, but it just doesn't make any sense to me. So that still annoys me to this day. One of the other things is that, so I heard... Uh, and I think with the first movie, but also with this movie, is that Mila Yavovich did a lot of her own stunts. And you can see that. And it's great. Like, it's fantastic that she did that. And I think it's fantastic when you can see the actor actually doing things, as well as, you know, not getting hurt doing them. Like, I don't want them to, to get hurt. But it's cool when you see them doing the things. That being said, many of the fight sequences, for some fucking reason, are just the super, super fast, flashy cut, like... <laughs> Just like 15 cuts a second where you can't see what the fuck is going on. You see like a fist here, a, like a knee there, a punchy like that. Like you can't hardly tell what's going on and you can't see any of the actors or actresses. Like it could just be two random extras a lot of times because of where the camera is at and how fast the cuts are going. That you can't really tell. And I get that especially with one of the sequences they were trying to add more energy to what could have been a lackluster fight. But you just need to shoot that originally better. Like, that, what, the, the things that they chose for a lot of the fight sequences, for this, the rapidness of the cuts and the zoom, not great. So, did not care for that. I did like the, like, kind of the main intro, uh, the main introduction of Alice uh, Miljavovic's character. So, where she, like, came in on her bike, that was really badass. And what she did after that, was like, with the bike was badass, but the bike went vertical for... Basically no reason. Like, there's no logical reason that I can see for that bike to suddenly go vertical. But, 
rule of cool, what happened after that was badass, so I'm fine with it. Also, uh, getting back to Oded Fair, his character is such a badass and has such a badass introduction. Like, you know how badass you are when you see somebody in danger and you jump out of a helicopter, dual wielding pistols, headshotting people as you're, fall as you're falling through the sky, and you didn't even wait for your partner to clip your safety rope, and then you do the like spread eagle Tom Cruise and Mission Impossible and just hoochie right before you hit the ground. Like, perfect, and still keep on firing to save the day. Like, that is a badass motherfucker introduction. Yeah! And he wouldn't have even needed to if the chick had just jumped off the building like she did right after that anyway. I'm just saying. <laughs> but, badass introduction. But, so badass introduction for both of them. But with uh, with Alice, it, it, I feel like they kind of were working so hard to introduce those other characters that we didn't get enough Alice right at the beginning. I feel like there was like a 20, 25 minute sequence in the beginning where, where like, you see her, you see her like, wake up and pull things out of her head or whatever, like, you see that, and then there's like a 20, 25 minute gap without her. Which is a lot of time in a movie that I think is 82 minutes, give or take. It's a short, it's one of the short ones. And don't get me wrong, I, I enjoy movies that don't stick around too long. They get what they need to get and they do their thing and whatever. But there are, but that seems like a long time to not have Alice in this movie. Some of the other things that annoyed me is, so they, they do this whole sequence of this dude on the top of what looks like a convenience store, like, headshotting random zombies that are just, like, kind of, like, wandering about. Uh, uh, and so he's headshotting them, right? They make a thing of it. And they make a thing about how awesome this guy is because we get some other character introduction and you think they're going to get shot because it's like, oh, no, does he think that guy's a zombie? That guy's actually alive. No, don't kill him. And then he, like, headshots the thing behind him. And you're like, oh, that's badass. And then seconds later... Like, I think maybe a minute on screen time. You get introduced to Big Baddie number one, who's just a big honking baddie with, like, huge clawed hoppers and just... And he's got, like, a fucking minigun and whatever the other thing was, and he just is like... So, yeah, he's big, he's scary, he can carry a minigun, He's also small enough that, like, a person could be inside operating animatronics type of thing. Like, or he could just have, like, stilts on and just have, like, a big bodysuit, maybe be looking through the chest. Like, yeah, he's big, but he's not, like, like the the, elef the elephanders or whatever they're called from Lord of the Rings. He's not that big. You know what I mean? He's still relatively human-sized. And they do this whole thing where, like, everyone in the convenience store-looking thing starts blasting the hell out of this guy. Including... Rooftop sniper guy, who d doesn't hit big bad evil guy with a headshot. Why not? Person, one of the one of the people that I was watching this with said it's because he has plot armor on his head. <laughs> and that's so true. That is so true with this movie. It's like that's the only reason that that big bad evil guy survives all of the things because. Whenever anybody's firing at him, no one ever does headshots. In a realm where the only way to kill the bad things, the zombies, is headshots, no one headshots him. So, yeah. So that is not great. And some of the some of the sequences were just like, hack. Oh, look at that. It says hacking type of thing. Some of those are a little basic. But all those complaints aside, I still really enjoyed this movie. There's enough badass action sequences without hitting the camera in super super cuts that I still had a good time. I like the characters. I still like having Alice. I like Odette Frere's character. I like the pace of this overall. I liked getting to discover things that the characters discover. And the sets are great that they expanded out a little bit more to have a little bit more outside. And, again, take note, Amazon Studios, much of this was shot at night, and yet you can still fucking see things. Just saying. Just saying. This, more movies and TV shows need to remember that you can still fucking see shit at night, and so the camera should as well. Anywho, so I liked this movie. The actors were all fantastic. Even there was a kid actor for a little bit of it, and that kid actor was great, and even the side character. So everything was great in this movie for the, the acting capability, 
and you know the uniforms and the technical equipment and all that were jazz were fun. I think that it inspired some cosplay, but again, could have been from the movie or the video game. But regardless, there were some memorable outfits and designs, and yeah, I I liked this movie overall. It was thoroughly enjoyable, despite some of the big glaring problems. Overall, I still enjoyed this movie, and maybe it's because. You know, I watched it enough times that I'm just like, I got some nostalgia for it. But two thumbs up for this movie. I enjoyed it. Not as much as the first one, probably. But I like the different aspects and the bit more combat-oriented. It's not quite the, like, it's not, it leans less on the horror, and it's getting more into the action realm for this. Like, yeah, there are some horror sequences, like the graveyard thing or whatever, but uh, it's it does lean more into the, the action uh, and the fights in this, uh, this time around. But... Two thumbs up for this movie. That's all I have for this one. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you at the next one. Bye!